Welcome back to another episode of MotoGP Mac, and today we're going to talk about Jorge Martin's weekend in Qatar. Now, it, this is just my opinion, and I'm quite happy to see either Peko Vanyaya or Jorge Martin win the championship next weekend. The winner doesn't really worry me. Of, of the two of them, I think they're both deserving winners. But one of the things I noticed from the get-go of the weekend with Jorge Martin was the interviews that he was putting out beforehand were kind of, in a way, attacking uh, Peko and Ducati, especially over the tyre pressure warning that Peko got from Sepang. And, you know, I do find it a little bit funny where he openly accused them of cheating in the way of saying they did it on purpose, they knew what they were doing, they ran him under pressure just so he could beat me in the race. And... I actually, on the Friday night, rewatched the Malaysian Grand Prix. And, you know, I genuinely do think that Peko thought that he would be behind a group of people rather than out in front front like he was in Qatar. And I think he set the tyre pressure probably under. I think Martin is right in that, that he set it probably under because he thought... He was going to be behind people and the pressure is going to raise. And what happened was that Peko was out in front and he was in a cooler pressure zone, let's just call it, riding around there. Does it make it right? It doesn't. But again, it's the way and the strategy that you have to go now. And we all suggested in Sepang that uh, Jorge Martin believed that he was going to lead and therefore... Uh, he had maybe a higher tyre pressure, but of course he was behind Peko, battling with Peko, couldn't get past Peko, and his tyre pressure went through the roof and he lost front field. And I thought it was very weird that this was one of the first things that he brought into the race weekend. The second thing then, kind of reflecting on Jorge Martin's race weekend, um, I do think he is feeling the championship battle pressure more than Peko and you know one of the things that we forgot about was that on Wednesday or Thursday they did spend a couple of hours up face to face himself and Peko with the championship trophy you know for the all the social media and media operations that they needed to do we've all seen the picture of the two of them on the rooftop with the championship trophy and them standing in different poses facing off each other and all of this and I think this may have started to get into Martin's head of what is at stake. He knows there's a championship, don't get me wrong, but it's just how the pressure has come on. And then Friday was a very, very weird day in my view. He was fast in the morning, in the evening when the temperature dropped. He wasn't so fast. And yeah, he's saying that he got two duff front tires on the... Um, the Friday evening, he couldn't get on with them. He actually switched bikes um, during that session and went faster. So I'm not necessarily sure that it was the tyre was it, or was it more a mental block that he had. Now, saying that, he came back and he was electric on Saturday. Don't get me wrong, do you know what I mean? But, you know, he's now coming out and he's pointing the finger at Michelin and saying, do you know, Oh, Michelin cost me the championship. You know, they, as in Ducati, didn't beat me on track and all of this. And, you know, when someone starts making statements like that, you get an understanding that the pressure that they're under. And, you know, my dad taught me years ago when, when I was racing is like, don't you worry about what anyone else does. Winners focus on winning. Losers focus on winners and you know if i could give advice to jorge martin and it's just just ride ride your bike do what you do don't in a way it's hard but you know the championship will come by winning races simple as that is the advantage pecos going into this weekend 100 percent, it is you know what i mean he's 21 points in 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 advantage i suppose and you know, I think he needs Martin just needs to focus on riding his bike, forget the media, forget what's going on. He has absolutely nothing to lose and just go for it. And then let it be Peko 
have to worry and have the pressure of managing the championship. Yes, I know it's easier said than done. You know, I've been there for my own championships. I know what is, you know, where your mind goes to. You don't want to speak to people. You want to just get on with your job. And unfortunately, he's at the pinnacle of motorsport where he has to speak to people. But I think what he should look at doing is just control the controllables, which are what he can do. He can't do anything more. But when I compare how him and Peko are, you know, one of the really key parts of this, and not a lot of people may have saw this, but there was a sit down with Susie Perry and Jorge Martin and uh, Peko Benyaya. And Martin wasn't as aggressive in talking when Peko was there as he was when Peko was not there. And, you know, as soon as the interview was over, you know, Jorge Martin, no, he was courteous, don't, don't get me wrong, but he, he up and left and Peko followed him. But Peko remembered that he didn't say goodbye to Susie or whatever. And it was just a really nice moment where he's like, oh, please forgive me. I didn't mean to be rude. And he he left. So at that point, when I was watching now, this was a couple of hours before the race. It was just after warm up. Um, you can see Peko was very, very calm, cool and collected. Um, and I think for Jorge Martin, he just needs to control his emotions a little bit. It's great to have the emotions, it's great to have the fire. But now you just need to control what you're going to control. You can control your controllables. You can't control what Peko does. You cannot control what Ducati does. If Ducati run a lower tire pressure to beat him, you know, you should take that as a compliment rather than anything else. Now, the other side of the coin is that Jorge Martin himself is on the same level of warning as Peko Banyaya. So I do find that very interesting that he points it, the finger at Ducati to doing that just to beat him. Did he do that to beat the Ducati? So look, there is there is so many things going on, and I just hope for Jorge Martin's sake that he can that he can focus on racing, not let the championship or what's happening in the championship um upset him, you know not to distract him from what he's doing and just absolutely 100% go for it. But I would definitely love to know your thoughts. What do you think of the whole Jorge Martin situation right now? Joe, giving out about Michelin, giving out about Ducati running lower pressures. What do you think he needs to do next? Definitely leave your thoughts in the comments below. And I'll be back again tomorrow with another video.